Pass on file. File item 34. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1442 by Senator Liu, an act relating to discrimination. Senator Liu. Thank you, Madam President. Members, SB 1442 is a simple bill that deletes redundant provisions and creates an effective centralized mechanism for implementing the laws prohibiting discrimination in state-funded programs. For unknown reasons, the state's Health and Human Service Agency is currently designated as an overall administer, uh, administrator of Section 11135 claims. Section 1135's primary focus is prohibiting discrimination in state-funded programs. However, the state's entity with expertise in enforcing anti-discrimination laws is the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, which makes it the most logical choice to administer Section 11135. The bill is sponsored by the Department of Fair Employment and Housing and supported by the California Health and Human Services Agency, and is just a common sense streamlining measure, and I ask for your support on this bill. Thank you, Senator. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Ayes 38, no zero, the measure passes. We're gonna return now to file item 33. And Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1347 by Senator Nielsen and Ackling to Fire Prevention. Senator Nielsen. Now I'm ready. Uh, Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, this extends the sunset and reporting data under the State Responsibility Area Fire Prevention Fee. This allows us to continue to gather information that is necessary. This uh, legislation establishing a fire prevention fee passed here several years ago. And this will extend the reporting of certain information, which I will recite for an additional five years. I'll argue that that is very important information to ensure that the fire prevention fee is used for the purposes it intended. Early on, this was not the case, and it provoked a lot of controversy and a lot of concern for the people that we represent in the state responsibility areas. The report includes and will continue to include with the passage of this legislation, the extension, an evaluation of the benefits received by the counties, the effectiveness of the board's grant programs to uh, such things as the fire safe councils, the number of defensible space inspections during the reporting period, and that's very important because the key to this being a fee and not a tax is the benefit to the, the private landowner, the degree of compliance with defensible space requirements, and the measures taken by CAL FIRE to increase compliance. There has been no opposition. It has received unanimous support. I argue we continue to have this data to keep the trust with those who are paying this tax. I urge, or this fee, shall I say, uh, I urge an I vote. Thank you, sir. Any discussion or debate on the measure? Seeing none, any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Seeing none, ayes 38, no zero, the measure passes. We will return now to file item 35. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 113 by Senator Fuller relative to National Military Appreciation Month. Senator Fuller. Dear Madam President, members and guests, I rise today to present SCR 113, declaring May 2016 as National Military Appreciation Month. National Military Appreciation Month started as a simple idea, to gather America around its military family to honor, remember, recognize, and appreciate those who have served and those now serving, and to better understand the history behind it. May was selected because it was has the most days set aside for celebrating and commemorating our military's achievements. These days include, first, Loyalty Day, which was established in 1921, Victory in Europe Day, commemorating the end of World War II in Europe on May 8, 1945, Armed Forces Day, created in 1949, Military Spouse Appreciation Day, established in 1984, and of course, the best known of all, the May Holiday Memorial Day. The 16th Senate District is home to five of 32 California military bases, which are China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station, 
Edwards Air Force Base, Fort Irwin Army Base, Marine Corps Logistics Base Barstow, and Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center in 29 Palms. Please join me in recognizing the 350,000 active military members from California and the 2 million veterans living in California by declaring May 2016 as National Military Appreciation Day. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Any discussion or debate on the resolution? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? I 38, no zero. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. File item 36. Senator Glazier, pass on file. File item 37. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1146 by Senator Lada and Ackling to Post-Secondary Education. Senator Lada. Thank you, Madam President and members. SB 1146 would require all universities in California to comply with the state's non-discrimination laws. At the state level, the Equity in Higher Education Act mirrors federal law known as Title IX. However, California, California's religious exemption law is far more expansive than Title IX. Under the state law, at least 34 universities are exempt and do not comply with the state's non-discrimination laws, leaving thousands of students open to discrimination based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. These universities have essentially a license to discriminate and students have absolutely no recourse. Students across the country have reported finding out about this exemption only after being expelled from school. Universities that receive exemptions do not have to disclose their status to students or staff. Only in recent weeks has the U.S. Department of Education disclosed the names of the schools with Title IX exemptions. Recently, a university in our own state members, a student took a leave of absence and during his time away came out. When he returned to the school, the university did not want to readmit him. Transgender students also have reported being expelled as a result of revealing their gender identity. Universities are supposed to be a place where students feel safe and can learn without fear of discrimination or harassment. SB 1146 would narrow the religious exemption under the Equity in Education Higher Ed Higher Education Act and require all universities in California to comply with the non-discrimination laws. However, we have retained an exemption for those schools or programs that are specifically training students in religious vocations. This bill will also require universities who are granted a Title IX exemption to disclose that information to the California Student Aid Commission students and staff. The bill would allow the students that have encountered discrimination to pursue a remedy through a civil action, the same as their peers at any other university members. Some concerns have been raised about the bill limiting schools' ability to require students to attend chapel or require religious curriculum. That is not my intent. We are working with the Association of Independent Colleges to clarify that religious universities will be able to retain their core values and require students to participate in religious activities while still protecting the students' right. I believe we are very close to a compromise. Uh, California has established strong protections for the LGBT community and private universities should not be able to use faith as an excuse to discriminate and avoid complying with state laws. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Senator Gaines. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam President, excuse me, and members. I rise in opposition to the bill and in support of broad religious liberty. Government grants exemptions to religious and charitable institutions so those groups can do more to help society without government taking a slice or an unduly interfering with their special missions. It's a clear statement that what churches do or religious colleges or free medical clinics or a host of other, other entities do is different than what government does and it has great value. This bill attacks that principle. Religion is central to the lives of billions around the world, not just to clergymen and women. To narrow this exemption just to those programs that train ministers is to misunderstand this fact. I am a Christian, but I'm also proud that I live in a country with a history of religious pluralism. America is covered with churches 
but it's also dotted with synagogues and mosques and temples as well. Everyone is free to worship as they please. In California, I'm afraid that we are heading toward one religion, and that religion is of the state. We are headed towards a one belief system, and to stray from that state-sponsored orthodox is not just wrong, but punishable. I urge a no vote. Thank you, Senator Nielsen, followed by Senator Morrell. Senator Nielsen. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the author has mentioned some ongoing uh, discussions, and, and I hope that those are fruitful. Uh, uh, the religious-based universities are very concerned about this. Even the state senate continues to pray as we begin our session. I hope that would never end. And this is an essential function of our religious universities, that there is prayer that is conducted. Religion is freely taught. Even in our public universities, we have our religious studies. That ought not in any way be chilled or stifled, and would not want to have any of us support legislation that in any manner or way did that. I'm not clear that this bill today before us uh, would not so chill or stifle that. And opponents of it, I don't think, are so convinced either. Therefore, I could not support the bill today. I appreciate Senator Lara is working with uh, some of those groups, but we'll have to see how those negotiations continue. Those uh, amendments have not yet been made, though. Therefore, I cannot be supportive today. Thank you. Senator Morrell. Madam uh, President, uh, thank you. And um, question to the author. Senator Lara, you, will you entertain a question? Absolutely. Go ahead. Senator, yeah, yeah, just one question. Will this bill, uh, I'm trying to figure it out, but it appears like it will deny students at private colleges established after um, January 1st, 2016, um, deny them access to the Cal Grant program? No. Okay. The wrong bill. Wrong bill. But if this goes into effect to a religious school, um, it seems like in your bill this would affect it. The mic. People can't hear you. Speak into the mic. Anyway, if this bill does go through, it, it does indeed appear like it would harm Absolutely uh, not. Christian colleges. Absolutely not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Morlock. <clears throat> thank you, Madam President. Uh, it's uh, graduation season uh, in California. In the month of May. Uh, two years ago, I uh, had the privilege of participating in my alma mater's graduation ceremony. I didn't go to my own graduation because of reasons I was busy, I don't know. Uh, but it was a delight to be asked to come back and participate. I was uh, selected as the alumni of the year for the College uh, of Business Administration. So it was fun to get up at the podium and congratulate the class of 2014 from the class of 1977-78. And I said that we shared one unique characteristic. We both have the same governor signing our diplomas, which was <laughs> sort of an interesting fact. <clears throat> uh, Madam President, I haven't had a chance to look at all the amendments, but we have uh, a country where there's been an amazing amount of tolerance, um, and, and there's been discrimination. And we've been working to provide diversification and tolerance over the long history of our nation. And so we have a group of universities that have a tenant that uh, espouses sexual purity, and that provides for a pretty tough dictate for those that participate. But I'm a, a little nervous that we're now showing some intolerance and I want to be careful that our legislation deals with that, Madam President. Uh, sometimes you can become what you hate, <clears throat> and you can become intolerant if you've been the victim of intolerance. So I, I want to just be very careful where we're going. And so today I'm very uncomfortable with this bill, and we will be uh, urging a no vote. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it's uh, 
It's concerning for, for me and, and certainly my constituents as we've seen in this session of the legislature uh, an incremental uh, taking of our constitutional rights. Uh, I witnessed it uh, when we had all of our gun bills coming forward. I felt it was an infringement on our Second Amendment rights. And the danger of that is that we begin pushing the envelope on other freedoms, such as freedom of religion, which is the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why this country was formed. So I'm very concerned about uh, impeding on our First Amendment rights now. I think my constituents share in this concern. And uh, for those reasons, I urge a no vote on this. Appreciate that. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Lara, please close. Thank you, Madam President. Again, I want to uh, reassure anyone we are not limiting the amount of mon uh, state money these universities can obtain. That is a different legislation. My intent is not to hurt the students, even the LGBT students that choose to go into these universities. Uh, and, and I want to be very clear, I'm not, I am very intentful on not becoming what I hate. I know very clearly what that is, and uh, I praise the Lord that it never happens to me. Uh, but I do want to just be very clear, schools will still be able to conduct religious activities and can require these religious activities for the students that are attending these universities. We are simply saying that if you have an exemption for Title IX, that students be given the option to see that information beforehand so that they can make the appropriate decision. They might still choose to attend those universities and that's perfectly fine. The other thing we're doing is giving students that recourse, the ability that if they are subjugated to discrimination, which is also protected in our constitution, by the way, have the right to seek remedies. Just like any other university, any other student has that same right in all our universities across California. Members, this is a, a righteous bill that seeks to ensure that every student is protected. Again, the private, we're working very diligently with the private university association to ensure that we're very clear that these students that choose to attend these universities, whether they're gay or straight, transgender or not, still have to adhere to whatever religious requirements they have to, to in order to graduate. With that, I respectfully ask for your aye vote. And thank you. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson? No. no Bates? No. no Bell? Aye. Berryhill? No. no Block? No. Aye. Canella? No. no De Leon? Fuller? No. no Gaines? No, no Galgioni? No. Aye. Glazer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Aye. Hancock? No. Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Hertzberg? No. Aye. Hill? No. Aye. Hueso? Aye. Aye. Huff? Jackson? Aye. Aye. Lada? Aye. Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Leva? I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, no Morell, Wynn, no Nilsson, no Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, no Vidak, no Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I. Please call the absent members. De Leon, Huff. No, Morell, no. no, runner. Ayes 25, noes 13, the measure passes. File item 38, Senator Galgiani, 38. Senate Bill 1270, pass on file. File item 39, Senator Nielsen, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1429 by Senator Nielsen and Act Lane to Vehicles. Senator Nielsen. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, this would allow Californians to register vintage blue and gold license plates from the 1970s. These uh, would be registered for the corresponding model year. Currently, the 70 cars can only be registered to the blue and gold plates if they are on the original vehicle. This would allow them to be whatever year. It extends the existing policy for the black and gold plates. That program was established long ago and is self-funded. This would be as well. It is supported by the California Association of Car Clubs. Uh, those are members of uh, devoted to vintage cars. This has received unanimous support. I will uh, reiterate this is self-funded and it just allows those who 
love the vintage cars to be able to be just a bit more proud and we be daily more reminded of our history, of automotive history in California. I urge an I vote. Thank you, sir. Any discussion or debate? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none. Any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Ayes 39, no zero. The measure passes. File item 40. Senator De Leon? Pass on file. File item 41. Senator Morrell, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 983 by Senator Morrell and Acrolina Mortgages. Senator Morrell. Thank you, Madam President and members. Um, SB 983 makes a very simple change uh, to California's civil code relating to trustees who handle non-judicial foreclosures on behalf of lenders. So far, it has received no, no votes, and uh, that's it. It's that simple. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any discussion or debate? See none. Any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Ayes 39, no zero. The measure passes. File item 42, Senator Leno. Oh, amendments pending. File item 43. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 970 by Senator Leva and Acclaim to Greenhouse Gases. Senator Leva. Thank you, Madam President. Good. I'm going to move over a little bit here. Good morning, members. SB 970 will priorita prioritize organic waste diversion grants for projects based on reductions in greenhouse gas gases. Organic waste diversion benefits to disadvantaged communities, project readiness, and air and water quality benefits. Over the last several years, we as a state have adopted several ambitious goals aimed at reducing waste and improving air quality across California. Taking a comprehensive approach to addressing these world-leading goals is critical to ensuring that we can achieve real progress without comp compromising economic progress. In fact, our best hope for meeting many of these goals lies in our ability to find solutions through innovative and cooperative new approaches that produce big benefits on multiple fronts. For decades, California has been a world-recognized leader in combating climate change, cleaning up our air, using resources more efficiently, and improving our community's health. But in order to continue being that world leader, we need to work diligently to meet the lofty goals we have set for ourselves and demonstrate to other states and countries how environmental leadership can coexist with economic development and prosperity. This bill will ensure that we continue to focus on the organic waste diversion projects that will provide the greatest benefits to our communities, our state, and even the world. SB 970 passed out of Senate Environmental Quality Committee with unanimous bipartisan support, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Senator Fuller. Uh, we need to have a Republican caucus. Thank you very much, Senator Fuller. Senator Leva will resume after we come back. Uh, again, you. Republican caucus. Cox Lounge, please. Very quickly. Cox Lounge. Republican caucus. <laughs> 